brings us to the dodge and burn tools. I don't really use the dodge and burn tools directly because they are destructive, meaning that they affect your original file. And if you save it that way, you have no recourse other than going back to the original. If you saved over the original, then well, you don't have any way of going back. I like to use dodge and burn in a different sense over layers and this way your effect is continuously editable, deletable, adjustable and you do not touch the original file whatsoever but you know it is a useful tool and this is a direct and easiest way of doing dodge and burn and they're located right here and you can select these two. Sponge tool is not something that I use very often actually pretty much none at all so just dodge and burn are the primary tools and these icons go back from the film days where when you're enlarging your or exposing your paper in the darkroom you would have like a little uh, cardboard circle on the on the paper clip that you would wave over a certain portion of your image while you're exposing to hold back some uh, some tones and make that area lighter and then the hand is the other way around. You would basically you would make a little hole while holding two hands or basically have like a piece of cardboard with a hole cut out in it that you would wave over the entire image only exposing a certain portion of it through that little cutout and that'll make that portion of the image darker where leaving everything else lighter. And that's basically where these icons come from. Let's go ahead and start with the dodge tool. And basically the dodge tool just makes things lighter. And the way I like to use this is in, in in when I'm working on I'm trying to fix imperfections as well as contouring and modeling the face and body and other areas of the image. By default, midtones should be selected, and this is the primary way I use it as well. And I like to have a really nice soft edge brush and exposure, and that's basically the same thing as as opacity except that we don't have the opacity control in this particular tool like we do in the brush and the history brush so exposure is what we're working with but basically the same principle you know and if you have a, a graphics tablet and a stylus and you can kinda pretty much adjust exposure on the fly by the amount of pressure you apply and this is what we usually do but since I'm working with the mouse let's go ahead and leave this around 9 and you can always come back here and change this. Okay, so first of all, let's go over the image really quickly. Like for example, right here we can see that there's it's a little dark under the eye, so we can just kind of lighten this area up a little bit. Whoops, way too much. Okay, there we go. And of course, you know, if you if you apply too much, you're free to adjust the exposure as you go and if it effect looks a little too much for you then you can always back off and it's everybody does that is just how it is you know you a little bit of experimenting goes a long way nothing is by the manual or by the book so basically we'll make this cheek pronounced a little bit and that basically is if we go back to the original image oops that I should have saved the history state but you can kinda tell that the cheek is a lot lighter now than it was previously same type of a deal with the burn tool and it just basically works in the opposite way as the as the dodge is it exposes it even more and makes it darker so let's go over this bone here and make it even darker there we go make her <laughs> seem like her cheeks a little fat but uh, basically that's how that is and it's just you can kinda control we can we could have actually done the eye shadow and liner with the uh, burn tool but uh, and you can I can I guess do a little bit more here as, as well and then you can lighten up the eyes as well with the dodge tool for example it's a nifty little tool that I use quite often, except in layers, not directly like I'm showing you here. And you can do quite a few cool things with it. So here we go. Let's go ahead and look at the original. Let me back off at this so it'll be a little easier for you guys to see. 
the original file and as we edited it so far. So basically that's all there is to know about the dodge and burn tools. And when I'm working with these tools, you kind of really have to keep in mind about, you know, a little bit, know a little bit about human anatomy and where bones are supposed to be and, uh, and the fact that uh, the lighter something is, the is, the closer to you, to the viewer it looks, and the darker something is, the further away from the viewer it looks. So you can basically create a 3D structure on on this uh, of the image with just uh, brightness and uh, shadows, highlights and shadows basically. So let me go ahead and work on this a little bit so you guys can see the type of stuff that you can do really quickly with just the dodge and burn tools alone without anything else. So it's a pretty nifty little tool and all I'm doing is I'm going over the image and making some things look rounder than others by changing the brightness of certain key areas of the image. So let's go ahead and switch over to the dodge tool and go over that as well. Get rid of this little wrinkle. Highlight the nose, a little bit more of the cheek. Let's get rid of this little area here. And all the clicks you're hearing is my mouse and the left and right bracket keys as I'm adjusting the size of my brush. So that's basically it really quickly. And I know you can't really tell much as you were watching me do this, but if I go back in time and show you the original and then show you where we came so far, it's quite an amazing change. I don't know if it's part of the better or not. <laughs> the eyes do look a little dark to me, but this is just in the sake of an example. That's basically it for the dodge and burn tools.